Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Cole Delvick from HuffPost. I'm seriously geeking out today because we have none other than actress Camilla Luddington in the studio. She stars as Dr. Joe Wilson on Grey's Anatomy every week. And when she isn't saving lives on TV, she's taking them as the woman behind the Tomb, Ra the Tomb Raider games. Luddington will once again provide the voice and motion capture work for Laura Croft in the upcoming game Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which was officially announced this week. And we have a trailer for you, so let's take a look. Give it up. Is it working? Is mine on? Oh, it is. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say, just a normal day. <laughs> you know, I think oh, I've watched well. that trailer like 14 times, and it still gives me the chills. Because I know Lara can handle herself, obviously. Yeah. But this seems like a pretty sticky situation at the end there. Yes. This is, out of all three games, I, I just said this on Friday, this is the game that has stuck with me the most, for sure. It's kind of haunted me a little bit, the ending. Um, so I'm really excited for Tomb Raider fans to play it. And it's definitely one of the darkest and, and more intense games for her. Yeah, well, you know, Tomb Raider fans have been waiting with bated breath for months to just hear anything about the yeah. third game. Um, so what was it like to unveil it last week and sort of experience it all with the fans? It was so fun. It's the first time I've done that. So each game takes a really long time. The first game took three years. The second game took two. This took... To, um, and I had not seen footage, some footage of it yet. And so when everyone was, what we went to the Tribeca Film Festival, so when everyone was watching the first 20 minutes, I was with them watching too for the first time. And it was just this really bizarre, surreal experience. Um, because you just never know what it's going to look like. You, you do motion capture and it's all in your imagination. You have to create the world around you. And then when you see what it really looks like, it's just... It, it always blows me away. Yeah, well, so this is sort of the culmination of the origin story of Lara Croft. Yes. Um, the franchise was rebooted around 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and so what can fans expect uh, with this game, be it 
sort of like the bookend to this journey we've all been on with Lara over these you know two games? I think that um, you definitely see in the second game that Lara has tunnel vision um, in her in her quest to basically hunt Trinity, and I think that if she carried on that way, it would be so self destructive that she she couldn't carry on that way basically. Um, so in this last game, it's interesting because I think that she has to sort of figure out, find herself again. Um, and you kind of see that journey happen. And what's interesting in this game is that she's not a hero or a heroine the whole way through. There are moments when you could, you could label her the villain and almost wonder if the villain in the game is the hero, um, which I don't think you can say too often about other are the lead characters in games. So it's, it's, an, it's a complicated Lara. And yes, she needs to find herself again. Yeah, what I've always appreciated about this sort of reboot is that it, in, it invests in Lara as an emotional being. Um, and a moment that stands out for me is in the first game when she sort of takes her first life. And there's yeah. that cut scene where she is you know, f experiencing what that means, right. how it sort of breaks her soul a little bit. Um, mm. And I think that really sets these games apart from others out there. So what is sort of the emotional arc here? You touched upon it. There's a darkness, sort of inner turmoil. Right. But where, what is Laura's, uh, sort of Laura's emotional state at the beginning of the game? At the beginning of this game, I think that there's an element of her that is sort of still checked out from the world around her. Like I said, she just has that tunnel vision. And there's a point where she has to sort of deal with the consequences of her actions because of that. Um, so you see a very unhealthily dedicated Lara to her mission, and you see what that does to her emotionally and physically, and the end result of it. Yeah, and so more about this darkness. Like these reboots are sort of much more gritty approach, more realistic approach than we've seen um, yeah. other attempts in the past. So why do you think it was sort of necessary to take this tone with this character today? Because I think that we started off like we. I don't think we could have started the game with the very first kill and had her really be emotionally affected by that, and then sort of ignore for future games what killing over and over and over again does to her. I think it wouldn't have been true to the character. So at this point, we had to have her in a certain emotional state where she has to be checked out in order to do what she feels like is the right thing to do. And then she's going to question whether it all has been the right thing to do. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I, I think she has to be this dark, otherwise, that first kill wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be true to the character the whole way through. Is that how you sort of reconcile the like, sort of innocence that she once had, and now she's this essentially like a killing machine, mowing down yeah. Trinity baddies, you know, uh, with reckless abandon? Yeah, I mean, in this game, this is not a spoiler. In this game, she sets off the end of the world, so she becomes even more tunnel focused in a way because now she's not just out to sort of get revenge for her father and stop Trinity from doing what she thinks Trinity are doing. Now she has to save the entire world. So she's very conflicted, and, um, and she has to grapple with that. So, you know, she, we met her as this naive university student, yeah. um, and she's turned into this hardened adventurer. So right. I want to know, what has your journey with her been like? Because at this point, you've played her longer than you have yeah. Joe on Grey's Anatomy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... I was playing her when I was on Californication and True Blood. Like, my days off, are, I always go and do Tomb Raider. Um, it's been an interesting journey with her. A lot of times I walk away emotionally exhausted. That does happen on Grey's Anatomy. I had um, a couple episodes where I had to deal with an abusive husband, and at the end of the day, it was very hard to go home and sort of let it go. And Lara is one of those characters that really does just stay with me for a very long time. Um, because she never has a day when she's like drinking cocktails. On, I'm like waiting for the game where she gets to like just relax. It's never coming. Um, so yeah, I, I find her exhausting as a character and to go on the journey with her and to, for her to continue to find out things that devastate her. Have, when I read it, I'm devastated along with her. Um, so yeah, she's, she feels like a little part of me at this point. You know, you mentioned the motion capture work, and I'm curious from an actor's perspective, 
of course you have to be cognizant that you are wearing this thing and there's, you know, yeah. dots on your face. Looking and all that really attractive. <laughs> but are, <laughs> in sort of your head, are you acting as if, you know, you are Laura and like the tears are real, the, you know. Yeah, everything has to be real. Otherwise, I think that you would hear it and you would see it. They capture every muscle moving on my face. And if it wasn't authentic, I feel like I would be frustrated and I would just keep doing it until it felt that way. Our job is to make it real for us. And even though there's not a set around us helping us do that when we have motion capture, like we're not at, I'm not lucky enough to have a hospital around me creating that. Um, it's difficult, but yes, we have to make it real for ourselves. Otherwise, I think it would change I would think it would change the way the game, whole game is portrayed. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. Is there a moment over the past two games that was particularly challenging to, to use yes. the word capture? <laughs> yeah, the the hottest scene for me in all, and this is, we have, I don't know how many hours on each game, like 18 hours, something crazy. The hottest scene is at the end of this game. Any tease you no. can get? No, okay. <laughs> None. This is like Shondaland too. This, like, I can't spoil anything. <laughs> well, we know that Lara can wield a, you know, fire bows, a pickaxe, and her famous dual pistols, of course. But are there any new sort of skills, abilities, uh, weapons that she picks up in this game that we haven't seen other times around? Um, there isn't. Yes, there are new weapons. No, I can't tell you. I've been told this on Friday. I'm not allowed to talk about it. But yes, you will see new weapons with Lara. And, you know, the sort of set pieces, these action set pieces are so tremendous in this game. And the one that sticks yeah. out to me in the past is when she falls through the plane with the sh parachute and, yeah. you know, going through the trees. <laughs> yeah. um, is there one that was particularly memorable for you, maybe it from this game or sort of the other ones we've from seen? From this game or the other ones. That's very memorable to me, too. Um, I think, uh, oh man, it's hard to talk about this game without spoiling things. Um, I, the, in the last game, I fought a bear. That you did. No big deal. <laughs> I killed a bear. Um, that was memorable because that's not something that I could do motion capture for. So I was just in the booth. I complain about this every game because with every game, they always say to you, do something crazy in the booth, right? Like, just drown for us. And that was one of those times where, like, okay, a bear is, like, fighting you <laughs> and just, like, just be one with the bear and just, like, kill it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, how do I do that scene? Um, so those moments are always really fun for me because I have to really get into a certain character. I look crazy in the booth. If someone was actually filming what I was doing, I look like a maniac. Um, but that was that's a, that's a scene that was really fun to do in the last game. That was well, you nailed memorable. it. It was very believable. Thank you. Um, you know, and so if you're going from Grays to this to work on Tomb Raider, what is the, yeah. sort of the preparation like in terms of is there like a physical regimen that you have to go through before every game sort of starts to gear up? Um, well, I started this game very soon after giving birth, so there was just a. I had to remember how to literally use my body again. Mm. Um, it's always tough. I end up doing Pilates. I started Pilates after the first game because it just kicked my butt so much that I was aching all the time and I was just running before. Um, so I always kind of kick into doing Pilates again. Um, and then I think I, in the car on the way there, I'm just like, what accent am I today? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm British. Again? Like, yeah. Or no, I'm American today. So there's always that. <laughs> You know, um, the film adaptation with Alicia Vikander, she, she went yeah. on a press tour talking about how she really transformed her body for this role. Yeah. Did you guys ever have a sit down and sort of swap secrets, talk about the character together? N no, 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 no. I never, I have not met Alicia. I went to um, the premiere and um, I was super excited. I thought she did an amazing job and she yeah, I thought she was fantastic in it. No, I, I want to know what she did um, <laughs> because she looked so great. Uh, no, she went through a very intense training, I'm sure, for that film. Do you ever have any dreams of playing Lara in be it a TV series or on film ever again? Um, I feel so lucky to have gotten to play her in the video games. It already feels like such an iconic role to take over in that way that... Um, I mean, when this film was made, I've joked about this, I would have been a very pregnant, slow Lara, like <laughs> stopping for snacks. Like I wouldn't have like killed anybody. Um, 
so. No, I wasn't. I don't feel that way, actually, about the films. Um, the games challenge me in such a way that's so interesting and different to filming anything else. So I, I kind of feel like my legacy lies with this. But who knows what the future holds? Yes, who knows? Okay, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about Grey's Anatomy. Okay. But before we do, we have a little clip to show you all. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay, Grassy Lane Farm. Too pricey? No, I mean, if you like it, let's do it. Okay, uh, the old piano factory. There's this three-tier pricing thingy. Old piano factory is gorgeous, but you would, uh, you'd need a time machine because you'd have to go back like six months to even think about booking it for this year. But have you thought about Magnolias or Cloudland Inn? Ooh, 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 green shutters. Look that one up. Hello? Wilson, what are you doing? Well, my surgery got canceled because of Hansi Avery. So, we are trying to plan a wedding, but we suck at it. Yes, that's good. Plan your wedding, set the date, put it on the calendar. This place needs morale. This place needs some things to feel good about and look forward to. Yeah, yeah, lock that down. Great, now it's a work thing. <laughs> yes, let's give it up for Grace. Yeah. 14 seasons later, and I know. the drama has not let up. I know. And it was just renewed for a 15th season. I know. How was that received on set? Was it sort of a done deal or were people really excited? We were already wrapped. We wrapped on the Thursday and I think it was announced on the Friday. There was like a wrap party afterwards that some people went to, but I actually had to do Tomb Raider. So I couldn't go. Um, but it was announced at that party. And then I think, I, I think my fiance called me and said, oh, by the way, like we're renewed. It's, to me, I feel like I'm never surprised in a way because the fans kind of stick around for us every season. So we're very lucky to always have, you know, our ratings be what they are. Yeah, well, you've been one of the most sort of welcome additions in my eyes to the series, which is sort of this revolving door of, you know, actors being yeah. how long it's gone on. Um, and I'm so happy to see Joe in like a happy, comfortable place with Alex. <laughs> um, do you think the powers that be will let them have a happy ending? I'm, I'm like, <laughs> why, I want it so badly for her. You'll have to wait and see. Um, I love them together. I've always loved them together. I think they're such a hot mess. <laughs> um, and they've been through so much, but I, I mean, Justin and I always root for them. We always pitch like their happiness, even when they were broken up all last season. They're like, but what if they get married and have a baby and they weren't together? Um, yeah, I want that for her. I want to see little, you know, Karev babies running around and them losing their minds together as parents and trying to juggle it all. I think they would be very funny parents <laughs> together. Um, but yeah, I, I want happiness for them, but you'll have to wait and see. Well, that engagement scene a couple of episodes ago was yeah. spoonworthy. And I love what she said is that <laughs> you're so screwed up that it makes me make sense. Makes sense, yeah. You know? um, what was that like to film? Because it was really a culmination of their, their you know, seasons-long relationship. Yeah. Together. Okay, so Ellen Pompeo was directing that episode. And um, before we do any scene, they always have us rehearse it so she had us come in and she was like okay do what you guys kind of want to do so Justin like walked into the room and then I walked up to him and started my whole speech and then he went looking for the ring and we sort of had this I proposed kind of in our first rehearsal like stood side by side and stood in front of each other and she was like okay no and we're like okay never mind <laughs> and she's like here's what you're gonna do and I was like okay so she was like, you're on the chair, you're really nervous, and you've maybe been crying. And I'm like, okay. Because she was like, you guys have had a really bad day. And then she's like, Justin, come in, you get up. And she was like, Justin, look for the ring, then sit down on the bed. And so, Justin, and so I stood over him, and she goes, and I start doing my proposal. And she was like, get on your knees. And I was like, oh my God, I'm proposing on my knees. And I didn't know that. And it got me like really emotional and choked up that I was like getting down to do a traditional quote unquote proposal. And that is kind of like, I remember Justin being like, like beaming, like, oh, I'm getting proposed to. <laughs> and, um, and so it was just this really emotional, um, it was this really emotional scene, I think, for both of us because it has been five years of them being together and they've just been through so much and I was nervous. I was really nervous to propose. I, kn I knew that like you guys, if you watch the show, would be watching too and I was like, are they going to like this proposal? <laughs> um, so I was nervous too, but it was really fun and it, we actually shot it on my birthday 
And Whoa, so, what a present. Yeah. I like that. So I was like, if anything that I like, if any, you know, scene I have to do on my birthday, I'm glad I get to propose to Justin Chambers. Well, yeah, it really stands in the long line of great Grey's Anatomy speeches. Um, oh, so I know the fans you. loved it. Um, I'm curious, you know, so Joe has always really been in awe of Meredith on the show, sort of someone that she loved. I would say not always. You're right. There was some tensions in the beginning, but she's sort of yeah. this figure in the hospital. Um, yeah. And I'm curious that, you know, Ellen Pompeo has really become this sort of like symbol of empowerment as of late after her really candid interview, yeah. which I loved so much. Yeah. And I'm curious, do you feel sort of like many women out there inspired by the messages that she's put out? And has she sort of, you know, paved the way for you to advocate for yourself more on the show? Yeah, I think that like what people, that was the first time that sort of people heard that from Ellen, but Ellen and I have been close for a very long time. Meredith and Joe have not been close for a long time, but Ellen and I have. So I've always known Ellen to be that way. That's Ellen. Like she's just straight. She will give it to you straight up. She will give you advice. Um, and so I feel like she's sort of always been one of those people that has been a role model and I'll go to with questions. So that's always been Ellen for me anyway. Mm -hmm. But now other people get to sort of hear how she feels about your worth as a female. And I, I hope that it instills people to feel like they can use their voice and ask for what they deserve and not be silenced. Yeah, yeah let's give it up for that. <laughs> Um, and we are sadly saying goodbye to two characters this season. Um, Jessica Chapshaw and Sarah Drew are leaving us. And that's normal for Grays. There's constantly people coming and going. But this time around, there was a little bit of a controversy, shall we say. Fans were sort of up in arms. They love those characters. So I'm, I'm curious to know, what was that like on set to be received? I know there was like a plane that flew over there. People were really putting you know, a lot of effort to make sure you guys knew how much they loved these characters. I know. That one was... That one was really, this one was really hard. Um, Jessica is like a sister to me, so just on a personal level, it's difficult to lose one of your best friends on set. Sarah is a literal walking angel. Um, they're both so talented, so they're going to go on and do the most amazing, successful things. Sarah already has a pilot. But, yes. um, but yeah, I think, honestly, Sarah describes it as being love-bombed. She felt like they were love-bombed after they got let go because the, um, the outpouring of fan support and love for them, honestly, I should tell you guys, has meant so much to them. And they were just over the moon when the plane flew across Prospect. They were so excited. We have 100 pictures of them just geeking out over it. So I want you guys to know they really do feel the love from the fans. It's always hard when people leave, um, but they definitely left feeling love-bombed. Mm. Yeah, Grace has the best fans, I got to say. They do. And in terms of your future on the show, do you, Joe's sticking around for the meantime? Any? Yeah, you're stuck with me whether you <laughs> like it or not. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, we, you know, season by season, things could change. Um, I'm coming back next season. Uh, and you'll kind of see, get an idea from the finale of what next season could be like. Well, we can't wait. And I know everyone has some questions to ask. So I'm okay. going to turn it over to the audience. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. We know that we all know that Joe that you want Joe to have kids and how many children would you like to see Joe have? A billion. <laughs> I want I don't know. I don't know if they can handle like a dog right now to be honest. I mean, I would like her to have I'm probably projecting a little bit, but I would like her to have like three kids. I think that they could just I just want them to be outnumbered because I think it would be really funny. <laughs> but maybe three. Let's see how they do with like a pet dog first. We don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and we grandma's coming to town, right? Mama Karev is on yeah, her way. Next week, Jesse Ooh. Williams directed that episode. Next week, we meet Mama Karev. I yeah. can't wait to see that dynamic. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Okay, we have another question for you. Hi. Hi. Um, so I've always wondered why Joe escaped the foster care system at 16, and I was wondering if you any, had any insight into that or if you want Grace to explore that in the future or if they will. You know what? There, here's what happens with Grace. It's very interesting when you play a character. Is you're never given like a binder full of all of the information about your character. I had no idea necessarily what. I didn't know she was married until she was married. Mm -hmm. I was told. I didn't know that that wasn't her real name. I 
didn't know what her experience was with her ex-husband. I knew something terrible had happened to her. There's a, there's in season nine where the tree comes in and Alex and Joe are like, there's rain pouring. That's kind of when I had some idea that she had something terrible happen to her. As to how she got out, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question, but this is why it's so interesting playing these characters. They'll end up dropping little breadcrumbs and then they'll just give it to you in a very interesting way. So I'm excited to find out little details like that too. Um, I don't know how that happened, but I'll go to Krista and I'll say, hey, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> we'll report back. Uh, I'll report we, back. <laughs> we have one last question for you. I actually have two questions. Okay. As far as Grace goes, now that April is planning the Jolix wedding, yes. can you give us any hints about maybe how it's going to go down? Um, well, thank God she's planning it because it would <laughs> it would just be a disaster. Um, how it's going to go down, I can't even confirm if they get married. I'm not even allowed to say if they get married or not this season, so I can't really confirm anything. Okay. But I do say that she starts making a valiant effort to at least plan something. <laughs> and my second question is, as far as with Grey's and Tomb Raider goes, how do you mentally switch gears to go from playing Joe to playing Lara Croft? Huh. Um, I think you always, when you hop, hop between characters, you have to sort of like remind yourself of the backstory and what they've lived through. So I have a long drive in Los Angeles to both sets. And that gives me a lot of time to reflect, sort of like, oh, what? so what happened to Joe? Like, where is she at? Did, where are her and Alex at? Where is she in her career? And then with Laura, sort of remind myself of, like, what she just has been through, who she's lost in her life. I think their past really helps me kind of get into character every time. I hop onto those sets. So that's what I do. I just kind of remind myself of what's just happened and what's been happening to them for a long time. Do you have like a Joe playlist and um, a Lara playlist I mean, I in the car? I definitely did. Like I get like crazy, especially when we do like romance. I don't, ha I kind of did have it for Lara. I had a, I used to play one of the Muse albums actually for Lara. And then for Joe, I get really romantic. And so like, for example, like the day, I think it's like, forgets one song on like Taylor Swift's album and I was playing it all the time on the way to work the week that I was proposing just to get like in that place of like being excited about you know asking the guy you love to marry yeah I mean no better artist to you know help <laughs> you along that road um, <laughs> yeah. we have to let you go unfortunately but everyone make sure to watch Grey's Anatomy every Thursday and Shadow of the Tomb Raider comes out in September so let's give it up to Camilla thank you so much for coming thank you